Hi everyone, I'm Wendy and today we're going to work on some digitizing. So I'm going to give you guys just a moment or two before we start getting into this. I'll tell you something about myself. Um, I'm a new uh, educator for SVP, so I'll be working with the Viking, the FOF, and the, um, the MISONET. And I got to tell you, I really like the MISONET. The software, I've been a fan of the software. I've had the software since I don't know if you uh, remember how far back the software goes. Um, but I used to work with System 5. So there was System 5, and then it went to 3D, then 4D, then 5D. Then I think it went to 6D, and then it went to Premiere and Premiere Plus. So I was with, I've been with this software for a very long time. So I was able to, to watch it grow and all these new features. I remember when I first started digitizing, we had to also lay our um foundation stitches we had to digitize those as well and then when we went to 3d then that was automatically given to us so this software has come a very long way and i'm i'm happy to see the progression and and i've worked with it a lot um so let me show you one thing that i have been working on before we get started um this is um a design that i'm digitizing this is just my sample stitch out right now. So it is all satin stitch and, and it's, um, it's a design that I created from uh, different components of clip art that I had my daughter draw for me. Um, she's an awesome artist and I usually turn to her to do my drawing for me. And even though it's such simple shapes, I still, you know, hey, will you do this for me? And she usually just like whips them out just like in no time. So she's a pretty, pretty amazing kid. Um, and then today, later on, I don't know if you remember, if you tuned in with us a few weeks ago, when we had the whole education department together, uh, we all had our little um, talk about what our favorite thing was, and I touched in on the applique. So um, I'll show you that. I was wearing this sweater. So this cat. I am going to uh, talk about this a little more in depth today, um, so you have an understanding of how I got where I got to this, I did manually digitize this. And the reason why I man manually digitized it was because one, it was, this is a, just a satin, it's not applique. Um, so a wizard wouldn't work for me. And two, the image that I had was just um, very pixelated. And when I mean pixelated, and I'll show you, I'll zoom in on that um, when we get to that part. It's um, very, a bunch of little squares that are together. And when you go through a wizard, the wizard actually sees all of those different, um, uh, all those little squares, all those pixels. So it comes out kind of jagged edged. So I'm gonna explain all that. And we're gonna talk about a few different ways of when, uh, when to use which tool for um, digitizing applique. Uh, I love applique because one, it allows me to be very creative. Two, it uses up a lot of my scraps that I have in my sewing room. Sometimes I have, you know, we all have good sized scraps. Not all of them are these teeny tiny pieces. So I like to use up those scraps. And it, I just like it because it just, you don't use as much thread and it's just so much quicker than just regular, um, than just regular embroidery. So most of the time when I'm stitching um, applique, the stabilizer that I use most of the time is um, a tearaway. However, if I'm doing something on a knit, I will use um, something more of a fusible. On this sweater, I actually used a, um, a sticky water soluble um, for uh, digitizing the sweater because I floated it. I didn't, um, I didn't hoop it because I didn't want to leave hoop marks on the knit, and I want so I wanted to sticky it, and I wanted the water soluble so that I can wash away. Um, I will be doing a Facebook Live talking about stabilizers, the hows, what's, when, and where's. Um, so you might want to check in on that. I don't remember what day that is. That's August, and I. It's in August. I'm sure you'll see um, information about that. So 
I think we should go ahead and get started if you're all ready. Um, this will be recorded so you can look at it later. So if you want to try and follow along with some of the stuff that I'm going to do, you have that opportunity to go back, rewatch the video, and I think it goes up on Facebook as well. So no, I mean YouTube. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. I am going to share my screen. And if you have any questions, go ahead and pop them in. I have a great team here with me today. I have Amy and Meredith, and they're going to shoot off any questions that you may have. I'll stop every once in a while and see if there's any questions and um, answer them. If I don't answer them right away, that means I, it may be something that I'm going to get to, and your question will be answered um, as I go through um, some of the exercises I'm going to show you. So here on my screen, I have, and forgive me, you're going to see the side of my head because I have to look at my other monitor. So here we have our home screen. There are two ways that you could get to digitizing. You can get to digitizing from right here on the home screen, or you can open up to a blank canvas. And let's just go ahead and go that route. And while I'm in here, I'm going to change my hoop to the 150 by 150 hoop. We're gonna leave it natural and say, okay. So up here, you have what it says create, and then you have digitizing. So you can also get to digitizing from there. It's opening a new screen, so give it just a moment. And I have to look at both sides. And it's, there we go. So this is where you're going to get to first. So this is going to take us through um, a quick wizard and you have all of these different options. You have um, express embroidery, express trace, express border. So for, for the first thing that we're going to do right now is we're going to do express border. And what that does is it gives you exactly what it says. It gives you just a border. So it's only going to look at the outside of any particular um, clip art or image that you bring into the software. So let's go ahead and go next. I'm going to load a picture and I had a picture already to go. And I'm going to use this flower and I'm going to use this flower a few times because there's some different things I want to be able to show you. So we're going to click on that flower and say, okay. So here we see the image. I'm going to go next. I don't need to shrink this. So um, you do have the option where you can skew it or do whatever you want to do to it, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is. It looks good all on its own. And then you can do a monochrome threshold. This is just a black and white image. There's nothing that we need to do there, but the monochrome threshold is going to help you if when you move forward through the um, questions here that it brings you up on the screen, if it's not giving you a good enough contrast, you could go back and change that monochrome threshold. So I'm going to go next. It already has my 150 by 150 hoop in here. If you wanted to change it, this is a good time to do it because if you're um, doing it to the fit the design to the hoop and you know how big you want to make this design, this would be a good chance to, to do this. So then it's going to save you some steps down the line. So if you know you want this to be a, a smaller um, applique, you would choose a smaller hoop. If you want it larger, of course, you would choose a larger hoop. For what we're doing today, I think this 150 by 150 is going to do it just fine. You also can enter in a size if you have an idea of exactly what size you need it to be, if you know it has to fit within this particular space that you're, um, you have a, a finished garment, if you will, and you want it to fit within an area, you can enter the design size. I'm gonna go ahead and just say fit to design hoop and go next. And there is our applique design. So there's a few things that I want to point out um, about this design to you. So we have different border types. We have your, your typical satin. We have a running stitch, a double running stitch, a triple stitch, and a motif line. Now, when I've done applique, I'll be honest, I've never really went for the motif line. But if you really want to be artistic about it, this is a great way to go. Um, when you choose a motif line, you have all of these different built-in motifs that you can choose from. 
And you that is something you do need to change the sizing and things like that um, because, and I'll go ahead and we'll choose one. Sometimes they don't always look nice and they don't always fit, but this one's not so bad. So this would work out really if you wanted to do something more of a raw edge applique where you're going to allow those edges to fray. And that's when I would also use the triple stitch um, again for I'm allowing those um, edges to fray. It does give you a totally different look, but for this exercise today, I am going to go with my satin stitch. Um, also, I tend to talk like a Gilmore girl. So if I am talking too fast for you, just put in the chat, Wendy, you're going a little fast and Meredith and Amy, they'll let me know. So we have those options. And then we also have where we can select our appliques. So right now it gives us the default of this, um, I'm gonna say it's a lime green, but if we click on fabric, And we got to give it a few minutes if it's going to come up. There we go. So we have this option here for our applique type. Now, the first one, the quick, is just some basic standard colors um, that you can choose from. Then you also have fabric, which is pretty darn cool um, because you can choose actual print fabrics like you can see down here that I've already played with a few, but you have some built into the software. So if you click on this, oops, let's click on this one. Nope, let's click on that. And it takes you to fabrics. And then you have all of these different categories that you can choose from. And then if you notice you have a plus sign there in front of general, general, if you click on that, then it gives you um, what I like to call your basics, your circles, your dots, your feathers, um, things like that. Um, the one thing I've noticed, it does not have solids. So if you want just a solid, choose the quick and then just choose a basic color for that. So let's go and see what we got in our dots. And I was already in here playing. So that purple one looks good. So we'll say, okay. And there is our option. And then we can say, okay. And it changed it for us already. And we're not even out of the wizard and you still have all of these options to choose from. So we can also change the thread color if you wanted to. And I'm just gonna choose a quick one and say, okay. And there you go. We're making all of these changes even before we say finish. Now we're gonna say finish. And it drops it there into my digitizing program. So let me talk about this design. As I told you, um, when you go through the wizard and you choose um, the border, that's all it gives you. It gives you a border, which it's it's not bad. It's perfect if you know that you want to make just a, a certain particular shape. Say like you want to make some patches and you just need a basic shape. Let the wizard do the work for you. Just go through those, those, um, those questions fairly quickly, all those different screens, and boom, you have a shape that you want. For this design, it looks good. I would be okay with stitching that out, but I'm gonna zoom into this. And if you see there, there it's not a full complete circle which is okay. If that's what you're going for, go for it. And you can see that it's it's touching here and here, but it's not touching here. And again, that's okay. If you just want it something simple and quick, I'd say go for it. Um, it's still a really nice design, but you do have that that limitation because it's a border. So what is happening is it saw all those petals and it just it was just one big outline of the petal. Because it doesn't look inside of the, the shape itself, it missed, it didn't give you um, a circle there for the inner part of the flower. And that is okay. Even though it's just a border, 
you still have all kinds of options to play with. And um, I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to go to my properties. So you still can change your lines here if you wanted to. You can change it to a running, a double, you know, a motif line and things like that. So just because you didn't choose it in the wizard doesn't mean you don't have time to change your mind. You still have time to change your mind. I'm going to leave it as statin. And then you have your width. So the width is your zigzag. How far is it zigging and zagging? So two millimeters, this is what the, this is what the um, computer saw. That's what a wizard does. It gives you results of what the computer sees, not what we see. The computer doesn't care at this point what we see. Um, so you, you can override your computer and you can say, no, I don't want two millimeters. I want it maybe three millimeters for my zig and my zag. And then the density, density is for how close those stitches are stacking up against each other. How tight are they going to be lengthwise? So my personal preference is three. I really like them close together. Then you have starting points. For this particular design, I'm not gonna change the starting points. Everything looked wonderful, but just the way it is. I will be um, playing with those start and end points later on when we, when we get to the cat and you'll understand why. So I'm, I'm gonna apply that and say, okay. And then there you can see now that um, those satin stitches are closer together. And now in this area right here, it looks like that we have a slight overlap. So how bad is that overlap? I don't know. You'd have to stitch it out. Anytime you digitize anything, you do want to do a stitch out. Um, that is, I can't stress that enough. There has been many times that I digitized something and on the screen, it looked perfect. Even if I went to the live view. Yeah, let me pull that over. So there's our live view and it looks really nice, but I'm concerned about that center. So here it may look okay, but when you actually stitch it out, it may not be what you were anticipating. So you do just want to stitch it out on a piece of scrap fabric. I, again, I'm going to suggest that you stitch it out on a fabric that is, is the actual fabric you're going to be doing the finished product on or something very similar so that you have an idea how it's going to stitch out. I'm going to close that up. And I'm going to zoom to fit. So are there any questions about the wizard. Oh, and you do um, you do have the opportunity to move nodes too as well. So you can um, see. So it's not the end all. The, the wizard isn't the end all be all. It is a good start um, for you if you just want um, the computer to do the work for you and you have just a simple shape. You just want to make something a little basic. Um, then then you're good to go. Uh, there is a question. The petals of the flower are now white. What caused that to change? Are they still white to you? Because they don't look white to me. Yeah, I don't. They don't look white to me. Um, let me, I'll go back to the live view. No? Well, I'll just keep an eye on the chat. And if it happens again for you guys, just let me know. Okay, so any questions, any questions on that particular one? Because I've got more to show you. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on. So I'm going to go to File, New Window. And a new window is going to pop up. OK, so now that I showed you the express border, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go load or create a background picture. And I'm going to go next. 
and I'm going to load a picture. I'm going to use that same flower because I want to show you something different that you can do with it. So we're going to choose that flower again and say, OK, and we're going to go next. I don't need to change it at all, so I'm going to go next. It remembered my hoop from the last time I was in here, so we're going to go finish. And I will bring that up for you. So this is an opportunity where you can um, create, you can be a little more creative and have more control over um, this particular design. So if you look at it, we can treat these as different petals this time around by using the quick trace. Now the quick trace is going to be, um, the computer again is going to give you what it sees. And it's not a big deal because you still have so many editing features that you can do in it and tweak it and everything like that. But it's just going to be a little bit faster, but yet still have control over it. So I'm gonna change out, I'm gonna turn off my fill pattern. I am going to turn on my applique. And then I'm going to click on quick stitch. And if I click right here, I'm gonna move that aside. So I clicked right on the line. And what it's seeing is pretty much what that border um, wizard saw, where it's just seeing the outline of all the petals. It's not, even though it's showing here, um, it's still just an outline. It's not a full, let's treat every petal individually. So I'm gonna cancel that. I'm gonna click on the inside. And you'll notice I clicked on the inside. So now I'm giving it a border to look within. So now I can go ahead and do one petal at a time. And we're gonna say, okay. Um, right now my petal is white, um, Meredith, because that is the fabric that is chosen right now. And we can change that later. So I'm gonna right click and deselect my tool. And I forget to right click and deselect tools all the time, especially when I'm inserting nodes and you'll see me mess that up in a moment or two. But here we have our first petal and I'm gonna go ahead and do the second petal. Say, okay. So I want you to see something. I'm going to zoom in and you could probably already see what I've got going on here. So if you look right here, the quick trace saw that this is, is uh, more of a point than a curve. And if you look at the nodes on this one, you'll see that they're all curved. So you can have an option. You can either go and fill in each individual petal and make adjustments. Or you could go ahead and just delete that one that we did. Click back on this one. And if, oops, I'm gonna cancel that. I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to click on duplicate and we can duplicate them and then we can rotate them. So we're creating this flower with the exact same petal all the way around. And I'm going to zoom out. So to, to be able to move this, we need to go home and click on box select. And now it puts a box around it. So now it moves it. If we would have left it with the nodes, all it would do was just try and move the nodes. We have a 45 degree rotate. And then we can move that in. And I'm going to duplicate a few more. I can fine tune my rotate by this right here, this little circle. Let me zoom in on that. Box select that. So this circle, where are you? I think I zoomed in too much maybe. This allows you to rotate. And then move it in. And I rotate it a little bit too much. And then over here, and we do duplicate, and we can move them. And I'm just going to do this 
fairly quickly because there's so many other things I want to show you. And if you have any questions, please just let me know. So there is a difference between duplicate and copy and paste. So if I were to do a copy and then a paste, and you can do this with your um, controls, with your control C and your control V as well. When you do a, a copy paste, it puts it directly on top of the previous one opposed to when you duplicate, it does offset it a little bit. So you have a better idea that yes, in fact, I did create a second one. And we'll just do this quickly. I know I'm not moving fast enough. And then one more time. Okay, so I hurry up and I put them just in there, you know, just very quickly. And then I'm gonna zoom in so that we can see the center. So I will go ahead and have um, a ring, uh, do a trace for a ring, but I'm not gonna do it yet. I am going to, however, bring these in a little bit more. I want them to slightly overlap that center so that that final um, ring that we're going to do is going to stitch on top of all of the petals. So then it, it kind of morphs it into one design, but you have the opportunity to be able to, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be too precise about this. I think you, um, Everyone has the idea of what I'm trying to do here. And you can see behind it that the flower isn't exactly the same as where I'm positioning my petals. That flower in the background, and let me go to view. And if we go to object view, that takes away the, um, the satin stitching so you just see lines. So the image that we brought in is just that. It's an image, it's a background, it's a template for you to work off of. It's not the end all be all, which is really cool. So now that I have those slightly overlapped, I'm gonna go back to my 3D view. Now I'm going to go to quick trace one more time, do a quick trace, and I'm gonna do a quick trace in that center. And yep, that looks good and we can say okay. Right click, and I'm gonna move, oops. So I I'm not sure why it ended up there in the film strip, but that is okay, because all we need to do is I do want that to stitch out last. I just need to click and drag it to the bottom, and there you go, it'll stitch out last, so not a big deal. Next thing I wanna show you that we can have fun with is now we can change the, um, each petal could be its own color or you can keep them all the same color, it doesn't matter, but I'm just gonna go in order. I'm just gonna click on each one just so I can make sure that they were in the order that I put them in, because sometimes they don't. You saw that happened with our, our center ring. So there's that one, that one. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm just, okay, so this one here, according to my film strip, is going to stitch out before that one. So let's... That one, that one, that, that. Oh, it skipped, I don't know what happened. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is now I'm going to click on the first one. 
I'm going to hold down my control key on my keyboard and I'm going to click every other one. Okay, so in the film strip, you can see which which petals are selected, even though there's a box around the whole thing because it's pretty much, you know, filling up the screen. And then if we right click, we go to properties. So in properties, we can make all kinds of changes. We can change it to any kind of um, outline we want it to be the running stitch double stitch motif stitch and, and such like that we also have and i change and we also have the option to change the width again i'm going to take that down to 3.5 and when i change my width it's all a visual thing for me i don't have um, a formula that i use i just know that you don't want to go past um i would say eight because if you can stick your fingernail underneath a satin stitch, that's not good. It's just going to pop. It, it's going to eventually snag and pop out. Um, four is is a, a lot of people use four. A lot of pre-digitized designs use four, but sometimes four is too fat. Um, like on, like here on my, and I'm going to switch back so you guys can see me, so I can explain. So if you look closely at my fence, in certain areas, because the design is smaller, if I did a four for my width, those lines would be too close together. It, they would be kind of, um, would be kind of fat um, and not aesthetically pleasing. So there are times that you need to drop that down because your design is smaller and it just won't accommodate such stitches. So I am going to look at some questions here. Uh, okay, so I talked about um, copy and duplicate. So Meredith got that. Is this similar to encode in placement? I'm not sure what encode placement is. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what that is, but I can look it up for you and maybe we can address that in another um, in another Facebook Live. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my screen and I'm going to take my density down to three because, you know, that's, I said that's my favorite. We also have the option for applique. So let me talk about these real quickly. And these are the same options if you were to just do um, the simple shape that we did the first time, you have these options there as well. So you have standard applique. And what that's going to do, it's what you're very used to seeing with your pre, um, your purchased applique designs. It's going to do a, and let me go back to my screen so you can look at me while I explain this. So it's going to do a placement stitch on your fabric, then it'll stop. Then you place your fabric, and then it's going to do another stitch. Um, a good quality um, stitch out is going to do a double stitch to stitch around that fabric one more time, and then it's going to stop. You'll trim your fabric, and then it will do um, the satin stitch. How or can you make a satin stitch look flat? What do you mean by look flat? Um, a satin stitch is the type of stitch is what it is you want. You don't, uh, is this similar to encore placement? And we're back to the encore placement that I'm not familiar with. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by looking flat. A satin stitch is always going to have like a, a slight hump to it. That is what a satin stitch is. If you don't want that satin stitch, um, if you don't want that, you could go, you know, with just a straight stitch and have it more of a raw edge, um, raw edge, or you could try a motif stitch. But when you do a satin stitch, you'll notice no matter, you know, if we change the width or um, or the length, it's still going to have that. If, if I'm thinking of what you're thinking of, that slight little bevel on top, that's the nature of a satin stitch. Okay, so I'm gonna go back. So 
standard applique. So it does that. And then you have your pre-cut piece. So when it's a pre-cut piece, it'll do a running stitch and then you place a pre-cut um, shape there using your, um, your electric cutter. Um, and it would be pre-cut. And I do suggest um, for best results, do it either two ways. You, before you pre-cut that, you put a fusible web behind it. Um, it's going to be easier to cut with your electric cutter. Or if you don't want to use a fusible web, and let me jump back to fusible web real quick. I prefer a fusible web that has a pressure sensitive um, surface on it so that when I peel my paper away, the, the back end of it is kind of um, sticky so that when I place it in the hoop, I can just give it a little rub with my hand and um, then it will stick to the fabric within the hoop. If you use um, a, a fusible web that doesn't have that pressure sensitive to it, then you do need to use like a little iron or something like that and uh, press that fabric into place. Now there's been um, a few times, and yes, this has happened to me, that I put my wool pressing pad underneath my hoop and forgot to take it out before I hit the start button. So my needle went through not just my fabric, but it also <laughs> went through my my wool pressing pad, which speaks volumes for um, the the machines because of the um, piercing power that it went right through that wool pressing pad. So, I mean, it wasn't a huge deal because I noticed it like within the first two stitches. So I just stopped the machine, cut the thread and pulled out my, my wool mat. But, you know, it hasn't happened to me just once. It has happened to me a few times because sometimes we get a little scattered brain within our sewing rooms and we're just trying to get this project done and you just forget the little steps so if you're doing a pre-cut piece i do highly suggest using a pressure sensitive um, fusible web um, the next option is a pre-placed piece i have never used this i always want that placement stitch so it, this is pretty much telling you that um, before you start stitching, place your applique layer in position. So I may have hooped it kind of funky or something, and I need that placement stitch for me. I don't know how you how the audience feels about that, um, but I want that placement stitch. And then you also have something called um, a cutout. And this is a double stitch outline is stitched first, then the machine stops automatically, cut a hole in the fabric to stitch um, to stitch outline, then finish the edges with the um, selected border stitch. That one I have never really used myself. I am more for the standard or the pre-cut piece. So I'm gonna stay with standard. Uh, I've got a hair on my nose, sorry about that. Um, down here, where it says, oops, let me go back to my screen because you can't see that. Down here where it says applique piece margin, that is going to be used for um, those of you who want to create the, um, the cutting file for your cutting machine. So we can do it right from this software. So you have the option, you can say match the line, match placement line, and then you wanna have, some kind of margin. You do not want it to be the exact same size as your um, your first stitching, your placement stitch. You need to have a little bit of wiggle room and um, so that when you do your zig and your zag, that it's going to zig onto it and then just off of it. If you don't have that little bit of margin, then it's kind of like you you cut your fabric, you know how when you cut your fabric and you cut past the stitching line, the tacking down spot, and then eventually it's going to slide out from underneath your satin stitches and it will fray. It's an ask me how I know. I've been there, I've done that. So do up that margin. And there have been times that I've gone to maybe 1.5. I haven't gone past 1.5 in that margin. I pretty much stayed in there. You also want to think about this when you're choosing your um, 
your width stitch. So your zig and your zag. If you're using a narrow zig or zag, you want to make sure that your fabric is going to fall in between your zig and zag. You don't want it too far out and you don't want it too far in. So it is something that you have to keep in mind. If you're using a narrower zigzag, like the three points, the 3.0 around that area, stick with a 1.0 um, margin piece. Okay, any questions on that? Um, I'm going to look at questions here. Yes, you can put a pattern fill in the satin um, to, to flatten it out. You could do that. You're absolutely right. Or if you really wanted to, you can also add, um, add um, a double stitch on top of it, but you're still going to have a, a slight bevel. Um, when you put a, a line in front of it, on top in the dead center of it, all that's going to do is... Um, just make the sides look more beveled than the center. Um, uh, can you hold up a sample of the fusible stuff? Um, yeah, hold on one second. Let me let me back up here. I have some. So I have a big sum. I usually buy this um, because like I said, I do a lot of applique. So this is steam the same. Um, so let me see if I got some scissors here. I got some snips. So this is, it's a feasible web. So it's gonna go between two fabrics, but on one side of it, It's got a tacky. So this would be placed down onto the fabric in the hoop. And the reason why I do that is so that it will stay in place when I'm stitching out, out the applique. You can, you can cut your pre-cut your pieces without any kind of fusible web. This is getting more into um, lesson on electric cutters, but you can you can cut your fabric without feasible web behind it as long as you treat the fabric um, with some kind of um, stabilizer, something like Terio Magic. If, has any of you heard of Terio Magic? Um, I really enjoy this stuff. Um, it really does make the fabric stiff and it will stay in there until you wash it. Um, best press just doesn't do it for me for if I'm cutting fabric without um, a, a, a webbing behind it, only because you have to use a lot of the best press. Whereas the Terial Magic, you just need to, to give it a few sprays and it's already making it stiff. You do not have to saturate your fabric with the Terial Magic. You just need a few sprays. Um, do pay attention to the corners. So when you have your piece of fabric, and it, you're prepping it to go on your cutting mat, you want to make sure you get the corners too, because if your fabric is not stuck to your mat, your blade is going to pick it up. A lot of people just spray the center of their, their fabric and say, I'm good to go. No, you got to pay attention to the whole entire piece that you're putting on your cutting mat. So if you were to cut your pre-cut pieces without a fusible web behind it, then I am going to highly suggest that you have a very good um, fabric glue pen. And what I would do is I would take my glue pen and put it in the area where I'm going to stick my fabric. So I have my fabric that's hooped. We'll just use this one, something I was playing with. So let's say my applique, my applique piece is going to go here. I'll put some glue on that and then stick my um, applique piece on top of it. And the reason for that is because it doesn't have fusible web behind it. I don't want it to shift. Um, so this is going to hold it in place. This one is a sew line. 
And I totally adore these. I go through these like water because I use them for a lot of applications for other things besides applique. Um, but it's a, it's a great glue stick to have. I really enjoy um, using um, pre-cut pieces um, because it helps me eliminate with the fact of for when it's time to cut it out. If I don't, if I cut too close to the tacking down stitches, it'll come out and fray. If I don't cut close enough, and I did pretty good on cleaning up this one. If I don't cut close enough to the tacking down stitches, then that's going to be sticking out past um, the satin stitches. And I'm not going to like that look either. Even if I go in with some, some trim, you still don't get all of that fabric that's peeking out from underneath the satin stitches. So doing a little bit of prep isn't, isn't going to hurt. I do like um, having the pre-cut pieces. I know some are like, oh, that's more of an extra step um, because, you know, I have to pull out my electric cutter and then I have to prep the fabric. But sometimes when you put in that extra effort, it saves you time at the machine, believe it or not. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my screen and show you what I, we were working on. So we have our petals here and off in my film strip, I have every one, every other one chose chosen, sorry. So when we were in properties, so we're able to change our width and our density. I'm going to leave my start and points the same. I'm staying at um, my satin, but I'm going to go over to applique again. I'm going to stay at um, standard, but now I can select my fabric. And I showed you this before. So we can choose fabric. Um, you click on that and then you have your options down here. Now you can even add a fabric background. So if you wanna be very visual about how this design is going to look before it even reaches the sewing machine, you can bring in an image um, that you took a picture of and, um, and you can add that image that you actually took so you can have a visual and see what it truly looks like. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and choose some of the recent swatches that I went with and we'll say okay. So I'm gonna say okay there and there they are. So if I come over and I click on my next set oops, of every other one. So again, I'm clicking on the first one, holding down my control key and now that's gonna choose every other one. I can go to my properties again and we're gonna change this to what it was and we'll change that and go to applique. I can select a fabric and we'll just go with the purple and say, okay and okay. And there you have it. And then we can also go to properties for this one and change that as well and do that. Oops. And Let's change our fabric and I'm just going to go ahead and choose that orange. There we go. So you could have, if you wanted to, if you notice that I went into every other flower and changed the density and all of that as I was changing the fabric. You don't necessarily have to do it with every other petal. You can go to uh, select all. And then you notice in the film strip, it picks everything. So since everything is chosen, you can go into the properties of everything and make them all universal. Take that down to five. So now every single one, oops, I left my, I left my thing there so but that's okay we can always just go back and quickly change that it's not a big deal and go to applique choose fabric and we'll choose that and we'll just leave it at that so there's a way that you can have control with 
with your design, but letting the software do some of the work for you by doing the quick trace. So if you wanted these um, pre-cut pieces, you would just go to file and then you have export applique pieces and you have the option of SVG, um, DXF and FCM. Um, I don't remember what the DXF is for. I don't remember if that's the Cricut or not. I don't have a Cricut. Um, but I know that the FCM is for the scan and cut and also SVG is what you would consider your universal. So that would be used um, for your scan and cut. I believe Cricut takes it and so does the, the silhouette. So I always go for the SVG because I do have um, two different electric cutting machines and I just use the SVG so that if I wanted to, I can use that file on either um, on either machine. So then you would just say export and then you just save it to your computer wherever you want it to be saved at and then you have that file ready for your cutting. And I'm going to cancel this. So if you want to, if you do want to have the SVG created for you from the software, you do need to make sure that you choose this option, which is applique. If you, when you're, when you use the quick trace or even the point create, and I'm going to show you point create in the next exercise, you do need to make sure, oh goodness, we're almost out of time. Um, you do want to make sure that's ch chosen because then otherwise the software doesn't know that you're even thinking about using an SVG file or a cut file, if you will. So just make sure that you um, use that option. So I'm going to check over here really quick and see if there's any questions. What if you want a different center and not the same fabric? Um, well, the center is its own entity. So if you go into, um, into fabric and then you can change the color. And if you're saying, so we can choose, let's choose that blue. So it's just a matter of going in and changing it. Just because you chose these um, here in the software, we're just doing something visual here in the software. This is not, again, the end all be all. These are not the fabrics you have to use when you go to stitch this out. If you want to use a texture fabric, which is awesome with applique, use something that's textured, use your wools and felts and use some silks, use minky, use something that, that's going to give it texture. You don't have to just stay with, um, with quilters cotton. You can use anything you want. This is just a visual and it's also creating it so that you could treat each individual petal separately. Does that, I hope that answered your, your question. So what we're doing here in the software is basically just, just a visual. Okay. So you also, you can also merge all of these together so that when this goes to stitch out, you can group those together. and then do the same for for the other so that that every other petal will stitch out together okay any other questions on that one because i do want to show you how i point create all righty so i'm going to go to file we're going to open a new window and I guess I'm gonna have to do this fairly quickly. I didn't realize I had so much to say. So again, I'm gonna go to load a background picture and go next. This time I'm going to show you my cat because it's just like a perfect example of um, why I point create. So I'm gonna choose my cat and say, okay, we're gonna go next. I am just going to focus in on this particular cat today. So 
I'm going to say, and I got a little piece there. So let's just pull that in and go next. We can leave it at the 150 by 150. And there you have it. Again, now my cat is sitting there. It is just a template. It is just a background. And if I did the quick create, I'm going to turn off my pattern. I am going to turn on applique, but I want you to see what happens here. Oops. Quick trace. So it sees the whole entire cat because its tail is part of the body according to the computer. And if I said, okay, and this is what I was talking about. Do you see all of those jagged edges? The computer sees every single little pixel. So it's a lot of pixels. This was an image that was not a very clear image in the first place. So when I found this image, it was very small. And to blow it up, it means you're blowing up all of those pixels. So I don't have time and I don't have um, editing software where I can go ahead and trace this out and recreate it and all that good stuff. So I'm just going to do a point create. And what a point create is, is means I'm laying every single stitch point. So let me do a control Z here. Um, and let's just get rid of those. So when you're thinking about digitizing applique, and I do more of the complex designs like this, um, where there's layers, you want to think in layers. So what do we have here? We have his tail, we have the body, we have eyes, and then we have um, what's sitting on top of the, the pupils. So we have four different layers right there in this one design. And you want to treat them as such, and you want to think about layering up. So the first place I'm going to go is this tail. So I am going to do a satin line. We're going to do a point create. And I'm going to, for the tail, it was simple, just create an area line. And I'm just going to click, click, click. And did I choose the right one? And then right click to deselect and I didn't choose the right one. So let me control Z that. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Meredith or Amy. Oh. I need to turn off applique, that's why. So, and I'm just being pretty quick about this. Right, select. And anytime that you're digitizing, you truly do wanna zoom in. I usually go into about four, 400 or so. For this, I'm just gonna go ahead and do what I'm doing here. So I have my nodes, so I can just move this around. Get them where you want it to be. Um, when I'm digitizing, I am going to be a little persnickety about it. Um, for today's exercise, I'm not because I have to keep an eye on time. So that tail, that curve of the tail doesn't have the curve that I want. So I'll click on the Home tab. And here I have an option where I can do an insert a point. Remember to right click after you un after you insert it, because if you keep clicking, clicking on it, thinking you're moving it, it's just going to keep adding points, adding points. And I do that all the gosh darn time. So there you have it. The one thing about this is that because this is just a template behind me, it's, it's not, you know, it's not the actual design. I can bring this up and insert more points. And I can start giving it a different curve if I wanted to, which is super fun. I'm just using the picture as my outline. So for this option, if you look at his tail, it looks like someone just, let's cut off the tip of that tail. Well, I don't want that. A cat's tail comes to a point. So if I go to the properties and where we have the start and end point, I am going to change those to a tip. You also have the option that you can change the angle. I don't play with the angle too much because most of the time um, it's pretty much on, on point. No um, pun intended there. Um, it's usually where I want it to be. And I am going to do the end point. 
So my end point is if you look down here below the window that's open, that's my end point. That is what's going to be underneath my um, applique fabric. And the reason why I want that to come to a point is because then it's less stitches that my applique satin stitches are going to stitch over. So anytime I have something tucking under another thing, I am going to um, either do the point or I will do one of the slanted points. I very rarely leave it just flat. So I'm gonna say apply and okay. And you'll see now his tail here at the start came to a nice kitty cat point. And this I will move in a little bit further. You don't wanna just stop right at the cat's body um, because then you want your satin stitches to go over it if your next layer of satin stitches. So if you leave it just at its body, your applique satin stitches may miss it. So we're gonna take a look at this in the real view. And it looks pretty darn good. It looks like a cat's tail. I'm gonna close that up. So now what we're going to do, and again, I'm gonna do this quickly and it's gonna be sloppy, but you are gonna get the idea. I'm gonna go back to a point create. This time I'm gonna click on my applique because now I'm going to do its body and we're gonna do create an area again. And I don't start on a point anywhere. So I wouldn't start here at his ear and I wouldn't start here at his indent of his head or anything like that. I'm gonna start somewhere like right here, okay? And I am just dropping those points quickly because I can always go back and change them later. I just want to get them down. For me, doing these um, points, it's, it's kind of therapeutic for me. For some, it's a pain in the pain in the butt, but I kind of enjoy it. So now that I have it. Um, have them laid down. This is where I'm really going to zoom in. And see, I forgot to right click my tool. And now I can start moving them in. So we have the fabric that's impeding with our image below it. So if we go to view and we click on object view, we can now see our our template background and now we can move those nodes very easily. I'm here at a point so I'm going to hold down my shift key, click on that and it's going to turn it to a point. So anytime you want it to be sharper you'll hold down the shift key and click on that particular node. I don't have enough nodes here so I do need to insert some. Remember to right click to drop that tool and then you would just continue doing this all the way around your cat and you want to zoom in. I'm not going to do that for time purposes, but you get the idea. So here I have my cat. So this first thing is going to be my, um, it gives me everything. So you just need to play with it all. Okay. So if we go to our properties of this, again, we can change the width, the density and all of that good stuff. We also have the options to change our fabric. And say OK. Apply. And OK. Did I not hit apply? Oh, I probably did. I forgot. I am in. There you go. So we can come over here and we can change our thread if we want it to. If you need that visual and say OK. And then you can just um, continue with um, doing the eyes. So if you want to continue doing the eyes, 
then I would just go back to my object view so I can see my eyes. Now the eyes I'm not gonna do as a satin. I am going to do a quick point. I'll turn my fill pattern on, turn my satin off, and turn the applique, gosh darn it, turn the applique off. And then um, for this one, I did do a quick create. Oops. And said okay. Uh, right click and then zoom in really good. And then you can just adjust all of your nodes. So you don't, if you start with, um, if you start with the point create, that doesn't mean that you can't mix and match and use the quick, um, the quick create and the point create. You can use them both. It's just what, what are they going, what's going to be the best option for me here? And it, it's not a big deal for me to, to just, uh, to do some adjusting to nodes to, um, you know, let the quick create do it for me. So instead of doing two quick creates, once I have my eye the way I want it, again, I can just right click and duplicate, and then I can go home, box select, and then move that over to this area. And I wouldn't move it over, do anything like that, of course, until I have that shape exactly the way I want it. So you can move fairly quickly um, with this process and have something done. It's just a matter of, um, you know, playing with the notes. And like I said, I find them, um, I find it quite zen to just sit there and move nodes because I just, I don't have to think about anything. I'm just there and, you know, for me, it's calming. <laughs> okay, any questions on this? So again, because we chose our applique option for our cat for his body, and let me go back to the 3D view. Because we chose that, when we go to file, we do have the option to export the applique um, body piece. If we did do the, um, if we did do the if we did do the points where we did the base stitch and then the tacking down stitch and then the satin stitch all in separate periods um, as three different things, then you wouldn't have the option for to use the applique um, cutting. When you want to know for if you know for sure you want that pre cut, always have applique chosen. Any questions? Nothing? Well, I hope it's because I did a good job <laughs> or you were bored and I hope it's because I did a good job. <laughs> I hope you understand that. If you have any questions, you can always um, reach out to um, to the educators. You can reach out to me. Um, I'm uh, wendy.owens at svpworldwide.com. So you can reach out to me. I, have no, I love the software. I love um, teaching the software. I love playing with the software. So if you have any questions, please do just reach out to me. Um, so I do want to tell you that our next My so Net Facebook Live is Wednesday, August 10th at 3 p.m. with Mickey. She'll be exploring the super designs, which are pretty super because you can do so much with them. Um, and she will explain all that to you. So just um, go have fun with that. And it was a pleasure having you here in my sewing room. You all really encouraged me. I, I cleaned it up because I was having company today. So thank you for joining me and forcing me to clean up my sewing room. All right, everyone, have a good day.